Thanks for watching this episode of Extreme Reloading. Today, we're going to take care of a couple things. Number one, the powder charge. Number two, seating the bullets. Then, it's time to go out to the range and give these things a test. That we'll be doing in our next episode. Time to add the powder charge. Now, I've uh, done another video a while ago showing how to set up this uh, RCBS system and uh, I'm not going to go through everything again calibration is extremely important I've already completed all that sort of stuff and uh, if you want to watch how that's done please take a look at that other video good rule of thumb is to have only one powder the correct powder on your table at a time today I'm using H4350 that's Hodgdon's 4350 it's considered an extreme powder meaning that it's temperature compensated. We should get the same velocities at zero degrees as we do at 100 degrees Fahrenheit ambient temperatures. Um, there will be slight differences or can be and so it's still a very good idea to chronograph your muzzle velocities at all different sorts of temperatures. I've already done this for the 243 Winchester at zero degrees Fahrenheit 50 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm waiting for a chance to shoot this at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not looking forward to it but I'm going to do it. So this thing has been calibrated the scale itself has been calibrated with these known weights the trickler and the scale have been calibrated together so we're ready to go I've got this thing set in memory at 44.0 grains of 4350 simply going to dispense and I'm going to make sure that this is exactly 44.0 grains when it's done. I don't know if you heard it, but there's two different tubes inside here and each of them runs at two different velocities as they turn, kind of like a corkscrew thing and feed this powder through here. So it went to the slower speed so it went to the second tube just a little bit ago and then at a very slow speed and it got me to exactly 44 grains. I pour this in slowly then I give it a little wiggle at the end there to make sure I don't have a kernel or two stuck somewhere in that funnel and I move it to the opposite side of my loading block. Make sure it sets solidly in here, indicating this stuff is loaded, this stuff is empty. Good habit to get into. Sometimes I'll have two loading blocks here um, to ensure that I don't have uh, double charges. And I also check this before we uh, put the bullets in. I'll show you how we do that. like to make sure I have plenty of powder in here. We're not going to use all this powder. I know that. But I like to make sure we have about half an inch or an inch of powder above. You know, this little area here. That way I know that there's plenty of it in here and it's going to be trickling through correctly. Okay, now a quick check of our powder charge levels. All we're looking for here is a undercharge, double charge, anything like that to make sure we haven't made a gross mistake. They all look good, ready for bullets. Okay, I'm going to be using these Lapua Scanner L bullets. They're 90 grain uh, bullets. Nice boat tail design. Very nice finish on them. Uh, fine little hollow point. Very high ballistic coefficient and I found them to be nice and accurate. Uh, in that rifle that I'm shooting, the Ruger number one, 243 Winchester. I've also found that when I test concentricity, that they're you know very consistent bullets. Now for these high precision rifle rounds, I'm going to weigh and sort these bullets. And what I found is that the weight of these bullets and pretty much every bullet that you get a hold of is going to vary, and that's a big difference. Uh, this one right here is 89.3 grains. This 
This one here, 89.4. After completing all these, what I found is that there pretty much is none exactly at 90.0 grains. In fact, they're all a little bit lighter. So I've set aside 20 at 89.4 grains and 20 at 89.5 grains. Again, doing this is going to help the uniformity, consistency of our batch of ammo with these A-plus cases that we have. Okay, I'm going with these 89.5 grain Lapua Scanner L bullets. These have been sorted and they are exactly the same weight to a tenth of a grain. Now I'm using the Redding competition die, bullet seating die. And I really like this for high precision rifle rounds because I can set it using this dial rod here. Now I don't have this set to anything in particular. As far as I'm concerned, it's just an index. I have this index right now to 1.08. And that is the setting that I like with this uh, Lapua bullets. I have another um, bullet that I like to use in here, 70 grain Nossler. Um, and then I just use for general target shooting, having a little bit of fun with this gun. And I have another setting, and I can dial that thing in there uh, just so fast, and it very uniformly seats that bullet how I like that one seated. I always double check this before I start loading, and I'm going to set this in here bullet side up. I'm going to continue putting bullets in the rest of these things, and uh, we'll be right back to show you another little trick to make sure that our bullets stay in very, very good shape, especially concerning the map plat or the tip of each of these bullets. Box of very, very nice ammo. Now I put these in here, bullet side up, and that's okay. But I'm going to baby these bullets. So I've got a piece of foam. I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to stuff it in here. That's a fairly soft foam. And now, when I close this box, Nothing moves. I want to take a couple minutes to talk about VLD bullets. You know a lot of people are getting into long range shooting um, and they hear something about high ballistic coefficients. High ballistic coefficients you know, allow you to shoot longer, retains velocity better over range. That's all true. So there's an assumption that VLD bullets, very low drag bullets, are going to be the, uh, the cat's meow, the ideal bullet. Very low drag bullets uh, tend to be, or typically are, or by definition are, long for caliber bullets. Now the problem with that is that these bullets are harder to stabilize. You've got to typically run a very fast twist in your rifle in order to stabilize the uh, very low drag VLD bullets, um, the long for caliber bullets. I ran into that problem when I was working up loads for my 243 Winchester a number of years ago. I fired Burger bullets, 95 grain Burger bullets, didn't get very good accuracy out of those things. I also uh, fired these beauties right here. These are Hornady match bullets. They're 105 grain boat tail hollow point bullets with these AMP jackets. Uh, excellent bullet. Just a beautiful bullet to look at. But it is very low drag long for caliber, really long for caliber. This one 
Didn't give me good accuracies either out of my 243. Tried some Sierras, Sierra Match King. This is a 95 grain hollow point boat tail bullet. Again, just a beautiful bullet, extremely well made. Um, but it's long for caliber. Now the Ruger number one has a nice rifling uh, rate on that uh, 243 Winchester, but it just wasn't fast enough to stabilize these long for caliber bullets. I shortened it up just a little bit. Found these Lapua Skinner L's Again, it's just a beautiful bullet, very, very well made, extremely consistent on the concentricity. They'll have some variability, as we saw, in the weight of the bullet. Uh, nothing that a little bit of sorting won't fix, though. Um, and these 90 grain bullets stabilize beautifully. Well, let me tell you, accuracy is fantastic with these things. How do we measure stability? It's a calculation. Greenhill's formula, there's some modifications on Greenhill's formula. And uh, you know when you, you when you run the calculations on these 105 grain boat tail hollow point Hornady match, or even these, they come up right on the line of being able to stabilize with the type of rifling in that Ruger number one, which by the way, isn't a slow rifling. Uh, it's a pretty nice rifling, kind of a standard rifling, if not a little fast rifling on that Ruger number one. Um, indicates it should have been able to stabilize it, kind of right on the line, took a chance on it, didn't work well. Accuracies tell me that. It's not terribly accurate. Um, the assumption then is that it's not stabilizing perfectly by the time it leaves the muzzle uh, and those rounds are spinning off a little bit in different directions. This thing stabilized beautifully. This is the Lapua Skinner um, and uh, it is a fantastic bullet. So don't get all caught up on VLD bullets um, thinking that that's what you got to have. It's really all about accuracy. If you can get your rifle to shoot accurately with some non-VLD bullets, well that's just fine. That's perfect. That's what we're after. All right, that's it. This is one very nice batch of ammo or box of ammo. Looking forward to heading out to the range. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Extreme Reloading.